Hi, this is Teacher Jennifer from U.S. Citizenship Podcast. This is our third screencast about submitting your N-400 application for naturalization online. The first video was about uh, creating your USCIS account. The second video was talking about the eligibility. The third video is the first part of the actual completion of the N-400 application for naturalization. As you can see, uh, what they do is they divide up the information. We have get it, getting started about you, your family, moral character, evidence, review and submit. So those are the major steps. Underneath the getting started, they're gonna talk about the basis of eligibility, which for me is that I was a resident for more than five years. They're gonna ask me if I have been using if I'm going to use anybody to help me with my application, such as an interpreter or a preparer from one of the legal uh, uh, organizations. No, I'm not. They are going to confirm that my name is, or my legal name is the same as the name on my green card. So my legal name is uh, Jennifer Gillardi. Have I used any other names? No. Would I like to change my name? And here you can change your name at your oath ceremony, but can they uh, can they process name changes for members of the military or their spouses who are naturalizing overseas? They cannot do that. Let us scroll up there. So that is good news uh, for some of our students. They're going to confirm my contact uh, information, such as my phone number. And, uh, and then they're going to ask when and where I was born. Um, I am going to, uh, I have changed that information. And they're going to ask me, this one is very important that I should show you. They're going to ask me about my immigration Im uh, information. They're going to ask me for what is my country of citizenship. Uh, this one for this exercise, I said that I was a uh, was born in Italy. Uh, my family is actually from Consenza, Italy, near Napoli, um, in the southern uh, part of Italy or Calabria. Uh, when did we become? When did I become a lawful permanent resident? I am saying that I became a lawful permanent resident on June 1st, 2012. They asked me my name on my permanent resident card and did I provide my alien number? I did not provide it at this time. So I will have to go back and change that. The next thing is about you. And every time you change a screen, they do re save your responses. So that is very good news. They're going to describe myself, my height, my weight, my eye color, where I have lived. So my different addresses, my school and employment. And let me just show you something very interesting about this kind of information especially on your, your um, school and employment or your addresses, it's very easy to add information. So here you can see from 2012 to 2017, I was uh, employed by Milpitas Unified School District, but I could delete that information, I could edit this information, and I can also add, very easily add, other jobs that jobs that I have worked, uh, places that I have worked for. Um, I'm going to add um, that, excuse me, let's do a dropout down number. I'm going to add an employer. When I add the employer, I'm going to say that add, they're going to ask for the company name, etc. So here I'm going to add one of the, the, the schools that I worked for, for um, Silicon Valley Adult School, formerly known as Metro Ed. 
in Silicon and um, Milpitas, or sorry, in um, in San Jose. My occupation was a teacher, and I worked there in the early 2000s. But again, I can basically say I'm currently working there. I'm not currently working there. I only worked there for a short time. Um, that's where I initially became a um, citizen, no, sorry, an ESL teacher. So I'm very proud of my employment. And in fact, I should change this. This was actually, I started the day after, the Monday after Thanksgiving. And so that was a, I always have a very good me memory and I'm always very grateful uh, to um, Silicon Valley and to both Milpitas for teaching me so much about how to teach ESL and citizenship def effectively. So, so next. So I want to show you how this information is populated. They're going to ask me the country where I, I uh, taught Again, this is very similar to the information where, when uh, for the addresses in the United States. Come on, come on. You would think I would know how to spell United States, right? But no, we are having problems. Yes, I should provide a response. There's the United States. Not exactly sure if I remember the exact address, but I do remember it was on Capitol Avenue in South San Jose. San And the state is the most beautiful state in the world, California. CA, how about that? There. Okay. Next. So again, if I would have shown you my addresses, they would have, um, it's very similar to the addresses. We added some information, it records the information. Let's continue on. They're going to ask me about my military service. I don't have any military service, but for my uh, fellow, for my students, they're going to ask you, have you ever served in the armed forces? Am I currently a member of the United States? I am not. They're going to ask you selective service. More importantly, especially for students, they're going to ask us about travel. Have you traveled outside the United States? Again, you could add trips. I did put a trip down to Mexico. You can very easily add, uh, edit these dates. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ask a request for accommodations. Do I need to be... Uh, do I have any physical or developmental or disability or mental impairment that prevents you from demonstrating knowledge and understanding of the English language or its civics requirements for naturalization? I do not. However, I do have a student who is currently going through this process. She had to go to her doctor and ask him to help her prepare an M648 which is for um, uh, accommod requesting accommodation because of a mental disability. Um, also, do I have any other physical impairments? I do not, personally. So, 
that's next so as you can see you could hit the next on the bottom or I can basically start asking answering questions on the top here we are about the family they're going to ask me about my marital status I'm single I've never been married also they've asked about children I don't have any children but I did show I did want to show uh, what it looks like they're going to ask you the name of the child the date of birth and they're going to ask let me just show you this very quickly I'm going to add one more child they're going to ask you questions say for instance where was the child born uh, is the child a resident of the United States etc cetera, etc cetera. about the parents they're going to ask you information about were your parents married before your 18th birthday and is your mother or father a US citizen um, and I basically said no they are not so the next thing that we have up here to continue to to go to is we have moral character I'm going to stop this video now and start it again in a minute